What's going on guys? So I am out here at Bishop RV Center in Corpus Christi, Texas to talk to you all about a topic that I am asked about all the time and I think is one that's pretty important to a lot of people at least as they're researching what type of travel trailer or fifth wheel to purchase. And that is fiberglass versus stick and tin. We'll be right back. All right, so when you are shopping for a new travel trailer, fifth wheel RV, probably one of the first things that you are looking for, especially if you're new to it, is do I purchase a unit that has this smooth fiberglass sidewall over an aluminum frame, or do I purchase a unit that has aluminum siding over a wood frame? And people really ask themselves that question because obviously there's gonna be a difference in how they're constructed. Also, there's probably going to be a difference in price. If you look at a unit like this and you get the exact same unit with a laminated fiberglass sidewall, you're going to see a small price difference. And that price difference is going to reflect the materials that are used as well as the look. That price difference can also come into play when it comes to resale value because there is a perception that the fiberglass laminated sidewall is a better sidewall than stick and tin. But let's clarify some of the differences and show you all why one might be a little less expensive however it might be a preferred option for some of you all right so in front of me we have a coachman catalina legacy edition this is a traditional stick and tin which means it has a steel frame with a wooden plywood floor system and it has a wooden floor above it in certain areas such as in this storage area right here and on the outside here, this is actually wooden studs with a bat style fiberglass insulation and aluminum siding that's essentially installed just like it would be installed on your home on the side of this unit. Next to us, we have this Dutchman Aerolite. This is going to be a very traditional laminated type wall. Now, whether it's a pinch lamination or a vacuum lamination really doesn't matter because if they're done correctly with the correct humidity controls in place, it's still going to be a relatively good process. Now, in some cases, you may actually have wood framing behind the fiberglass. In the case of most of the rear ends or the backs of these units, it is a wooden frame with fiberglass on it. And one of the reasons they do that is because of the number of wires that have to go through. It. Some manufacturers don't, some manufacturers do. What you also need to pay attention to on the sidewall here is that this is what's called pinch or vacuum laminated to an aluminum frame. And the aluminum studs are spaced pretty far apart. Now, the purpose of doing it one way versus the other has a lot to do with cosmetics, how you want it to look, as well as how it's insulated. So on a unit like this, the walls are generally going to be between an inch and an inch and a half thick, depending on the unit. Most of them are right in between it about an inch and a quarter and it's going to use a foam insulation which is essentially a blocked foam similar to what might be in a cooler maybe a little bit less dense in the wall system and then they're going to pitch it on one side with luon wood on the other side with luon wood and then they're going to bond fiberglass to the luon facing the reason why they do that is the fiberglass is relatively thin and it needs a backer that backer is going to be the luon wood backer and on the inside it's going to be your interior wall now, it's not a bad form of construction. This is a very, very common form of construction for most travel trailers and fifth wheels. But it is different, of course, than stick and tin. Stick and tin is gonna have the same Luon panel on the inside. It's gonna have wooden beams going up and down, and then it's gonna have your aluminum siding directly attached to it on the outside. And the reason why you go that route is it's a little bit less expensive from a construction perspective, but you make up for it in the form of manual labor. So manual labor, it takes a lot more manual hours to actually take each one of these panels, cut them, put them in place, route them out whenever you're done, and then tack them up the way that you're supposed to tack them up, plus make sure that they're connected properly to give you somewhat of a flat side. There are several different forms of this type of aluminum sidewall now. Some are a lot flatter than others. Some have more of like a, a wavy effect to them. Some are kind of right in between that real wavy effect and a flat style kind of like this. But the reason why some people prefer this is because they feel that that bat insulation and the wood itself is a better insulator than the thinner foam insulation that you get in a sidewall like this. 
That being said, it really isn't going to matter much. In my opinion, both of these walls are going to insulate about the same. Now, I'm not bragging about either one of them and saying that they're great insulators. What I'm basically trying to tell you is there's not going to be a tremendous amount of difference between the insulation of these two walls. Where a big difference will generally occur are in a couple areas. One, typically with a fiberglass sidewall, and this doesn't have much to do with the reason that it's a fiberglass sidewall, but typically with a fiberglass sidewall, you're going to have what's called a sealed and enclosed underbelly, which is going to be an underbelly that is protected. Generally, you're going to have the ability to protect your water tanks, holding tanks, and the bottom subfloor if you have water spray and things like that. Typically, on your aluminum sidewall units, you may have that, but in some cases, you don't. This Catalina does have it, but some of them don't, and it's more likely that you may not have it on some of these. So you're going to want to pick a dealership that carries this type of unit with the subfloor or the bottom of it being covered, and that is something not all dealerships will do, and it's something that Bishop tries to order most of their units with. Where one of your biggest differences is going to come into play is generally if you have a problem. Where that matters is if you have water that gets into the sidewall here, first of all, it's going to be harder to identify until you actually see damage on the interior wall, simply because these panels are somewhat rigid and they'll cover up any type of water damage. But most importantly, it's going to be far, far easier to repair a sidewall like that that gets damaged from water intrusion versus a fiberglass sidewall. With something like this, you're going to have to remove and cut out a large portion, fix the damage, and then glue it back. Or in some cases, you can access it from the inside by cutting out your panel, installing new backer boards, and then re-gluing this down. Either way though, it's generally not going to look factory new, whereas you can make one of these look brand new even if you've had some type of a major water issue, and because the structure of it is primarily wood, it's a lot easier to work on. Even you know some do-it-at-home people have been able to fix some of these to make them look really good again. But that is a big difference. The second big difference is the fact that because this is an aluminum sidewall, it's going to have less less UV interference. You're not going to have to worry about the sun impacting it as much. Even if it destroys the graphics or they start to fade, you can generally salvage it in some way. You can put new graphics on, you can do a lot of things to make it look nice again. On a fiberglass unit, you can't. Now, as long as you maintain a fiberglass walled unit and you do a good job taking care of it and you look for areas that could potentially cause delamination or water getting into the wall system, this is a really nice product to have. It looks nice nicer, it looks more sophisticated, it looks fancier, it makes your RV look more expensive. It's definitely nice in terms of having a smooth appeal, and cosmetics mean a lot to a lot of people buying RVs. Also, you're going to pay a little bit more, and it's likely to have a few more amenities as options simply because it is considered a slightly more expensive unit. Even though you can pretty much get any stick and tin style floor plan and fiberglass floor plan in the same floor plan. So I wouldn't really say there's going to be a big difference in terms of what's available from a floor plan perspective between a fiberglass walled unit and a stick and tin unit. That being said, a lot of it comes down to looks and a lot of it comes down to what you're specifically wanting and what your budget is. But I just wanted to make this short video to let you all know that even though people oftentimes think something like this is super cheap and they're built like crap and they're just not going to be a great unit, your impression of it may actually be a little bit different than the reality. And the reality oftentimes is that they're built very similar, except this one has more man hours involved in certain areas because it requires a lot more wood structure versus an aluminum structured unit. And in some cases, a wood structured unit can actually be a stronger unit than an aluminum structured unit. Also, you can save some money in some cases on these, and it's also something that's easy to repair. So when you look at all the pros and cons between the two, it's definitely worth being educated on. I will tell you from day one, I've had the same message about both types of units, and nothing's changed. I don't think these are bad. I don't think they're junk compared to something like this, and I do think they do make great starter units for people who might be on a budget, and that's going to be important to a lot of people getting into RVing because if price is your barrier to getting into RVing, then you're not enjoying it. And the last thing I want is for someone to say, hey, that's automatically junk just because people say it is, or because people assume it is, or people saw some video about how quickly these things are manufactured, and they avoid getting something that could get their family out there enjoying the outdoors, enjoying the RV lifestyle, and building memories. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again very soon.